sees you, God fights for you. He is with you and he will show himself mighty. People may strip you of what you have, but so long as they have not stripped you of your life, there is still hope for you. Good evening to you wherever you may be. Welcome to another episode of Tuesdays with the Ambassador of Hope. I trust that your week is off to a good start. Wherever you may be, hear this. So long as there's a heartbeat in your chest and there's breath in your nostrils, it's going to be a good day. Thank you once more. Episode number 96, we started a brand new series. The one thing. And if you were on, online last week, I'm sure you were blessed. So listen, like we do all the time, I want you to take up your tablet, your phone, whatever you use to listen to me, and please let's share. It's a wonderful time. I want to say a big thank you to the Most Reverend Joe Asma and his wonderful team. As you can tell, I'm coming to you live from All Nations Church, New Jersey, House of Restoration. Thank you so much for allowing me to use your sanctuary and your studios to reach the world. So please let's share. Go ahead, let's share. Let's share. Let's share. I'm, I'm waiting for you. We are live on Facebook. We are live on YouTube. Please share. I want, I want to see you share before we get into business. It's going to be brilliant. Last week was amazing. We've had so many, so many feedback. It's good. It's good. We are learning and listen, step by step, precept by precept, line upon line. We are doing it all over again. So please, let's go. Let's go. Joel Nancy. Nancy, how are you doing? I trust that you're doing very well. Thank you, Joyce. For Lemu, Joyce. Thank you for tonight. Greetings to everybody. Joyce says, share. Please, let's share. Let's go. I'm waiting on you all the way from Ottawa, Canada. Nanaya Rams. I hope your week is off to a good start. And Podaki, good evening to you too. 
George Adomako, Hope Tuesday. Yes, I like it. So you can say that a thousand times. He says that I'm his favorite pastor, inspirer, mentor, and that kind of thing. See that for that one thing. Yes, get your notepads, your notebooks, and everything. We're going to have fun. From the Republic of Virginia, the president of Virginia, Pastor David Joe, God bless. Oh, anybody, Nana, God bless you so much. I'm waiting. I'm waiting on all of you. I'm waiting. I'm giving you a few minutes, and we're going to get into business tonight. Episode number 96. 96 solid episodes. Wow, can you imagine? And we still keep going. We are not tired. We are not relenting. We are doing it. God bless you all, my YouTube crowd. Yes. Soldier, Daniel Pencil, so good to have you here. God bless you. BMK says, please share. Benison says, share. Please, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's do it, let's do it together. Yes, all the way from Leeds. Hi, Chris. I hope you are doing very well. And the crowd and the team and everybody. Listen, I miss you guys. We'll come your way soon, one of these days. But thank you so much for coming up. Please, let's share. It's going to be, it's going to be a blast. Let's share. Juliana Sapon says, hope, Julie, God bless. I'm sharing. I'm going to tag 10 people right now. Let's do it right now. Tag it. Tag some people. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm, I'm sharing right now. I'm getting a few people. I'm going to do that. We are going to be blessed today. Vicky, thank you for coming online. God richly bless you. God bless you. Sela. Sela in motion. I hope you are doing very well. Can't wait to see you soon. Christiana Boatin, hello to you. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. I am so excited about tonight on this episode, episode number 96. It's been amazing. We started on this journey, and I'm, I'm sure it's going to be an amazing time. It's going to be an amazing time. So please, let, let's do that, let's do that, let's do that, let's do that together. I am, I am all excited. Just going to do a quick recap, then we will get into business tonight. Are you still sharing? I'm watching. I'm watching the numbers. I want, I, 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 want, I want to start going in full flow. So please share. Please share. Like I told you last week, we started a brand new series. The one thing, the one thing, I'm going to give you one of the trusted catalysts in the formula for success in life. So please never forget that. And listen, I said something, I'm saying it again. I'm going to put it right there on your screen. Success is never a byproduct of chance. Success is never a byproduct of chance. I said last week that you don't stumble into, into success. You don't succeed by accident. You don't succeed by osmosis. You don't succeed because you, you, you happen to want it. Success has no factory settings. There's something that you've got to do in order to bring success your way. And last week I gave you a few indicators, like things like you have to have wisdom, you have to have your associations matter, because sometimes you, you, you desire success, but you find yourself in some wrong environments and it can bother you. I think one of the episodes I talked about the fact that one time I had this bottle of water, you know, and, and it, was, it was water. Flew all over somewhere to Minnesota, same bottle of water, left it in a car after a few hours, turned into solid ice. What happened? The environment. South in Georgia is warm. Up there in Minnesota is cold. Same water different environment, different results. So you've got to very, be very, very, very mindful of the association that you find yourself in. If you lie down with fleas, if you lie down with dogs, I beg your pardon, you are going to catch fleas. If you fly with turkeys, you never become an eagle. And, so, and also your effort, you must put in some effort. Success doesn't come while you snore away. You've got to do something, you've got to work. It's very important. You also must have discipline. Discipline is very important. We, we, we looked at all these things and last week we talked about one great key, and that is routine. You must be able to have routine in your life. That's a prescribed course. Actions that you regularly follow, very important. Your habitual procedure, you must do that. We talked about the karate kid, wax on, wax off, wax on, wax off. The master was teaching him, the master was teaching him the power of repeated motion. Very important. Rhythm, muscle memory. All of those things are very, very, very important. And look at three keys to help you. You must have Clearly def uh, defined daily disciplines. I hope you are learning. You have to guard your disciplines. You have to pay the price for your routine, upgrades in your life. And finally, we looked at that you have to learn to focus on your strengths. Don't waste all your life trying to improve on something that is not there. If it's not there, it is not there. So again, 
whatever you are involved in, understand that you need to be intentional. You need to be deliberate in, in, so that you can make a success out of it. One of the greatest scriptures about success is when the Lord spoke to a new guy who had just won in the, the, the shoes of a great leader. Israel had languished in captivity for years. Now they were about to get into their promise. And the Lord had to speak to Joshua, that great leader. And in Joshua chapter number 1 and verse number 8, he said, study this book of instruction continually. Now hold it there. Let me say something to you. A lot of people fail exams, not because they didn't prepare, not because they didn't learn, not because they didn't take the course, but it's because they didn't listen to instructions. Instructions. It's very important. He says, study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night. So you'll be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. So there's a prescription there. You, you don't prosper, you don't succeed by osmosis or by default. You've got to put something in action in order to do it. And last week, like I told you, we isolated one principle that straddled our, that straddled our efforts and that is rooted in the scriptures that I'm going to use. In fact, I'm going to use this scripture in all the episodes that we do. Now, know this. I'm not going to give you the whole thing at a blast. I remember talking to somebody the other day and I asked this individual, hey, did you, did you follow Ambassador Hope? The person said, no. I'm not, I was kind of shocked, like, why? It's good. He said, Papa, I haven't even finished digesting the other one. And any week that you come, it's like my head is about to explode. Well, I told that individual, sit back because your head will really explode. I want to inform you. I want to help you. I want to, I want to deprogram you so I can reprogram you for success. A lot of you, you have been, your, your, your hard disk has been corrupted by all kinds of viruses. Viruses of misinformation. Viruses of half information. Viruses of half truth. Viruses of fear. Viruses of culture. They've all kind of got into your hard disk and you are totally corrupted. But I've come here today with, with a virus to devirus you or to deworm you, if you like. You know, I'm kidding. I really want to help you. I want to pull out some things out of you and replace them with something. I want you to succeed. I want you to, I want to, I want you to meet your maker one day. After you die or the Lord comes and you meet him, I want the Lord to shake you, high five you, and tell you I had a blast living in your body. You were given a chance here on earth to make waves. You did not come on earth just to occupy space on earth and die and go and occupy space underneath the earth. The earth is rejoicing because of your presence here. Make it count. And one of the greatest examples for the carpenter that Christianity ever produced is Paul the Apostle. And I'm going to use this scripture in all the episodes as our foundational scripture. Writing to the church at Philippi, Philippians chapter number 3. I'm going to read verse number 12 all the way through 16. And I'm doing this from the New Living Translation. Philippians chapter 3 verse 12. Philippians was not written by Brother Philip. It was written by Paul to the Philippians. The place called Philippi. And Paul says this, wonderful. He says, I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection. Anytime I read that, I kind of sit back and say, wow. Now, we are talking about a man who had written about two-thirds of the New Testament. I'm talking about a man who did missionary work. I'm talking about a man who did mind-boggling miracles. In fact, the Bible tells us that handkerchiefs and aprons from his body were sent to the sick, and demons left people. People were healed. I'm talking about the only human being on record who, who said, I went to the third heavens, and I heard things so inexpressible, I was not even given the permission to talk about. I mean, what else can a, pe can a person ask for? And yet it says that, I haven't achieved anything. Wow. So it kind of picked my curiosity. I said, let me know. And it says, but I press on. I didn't rest on my OS. I am pressing on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. Which means, he possessed you for a possession. He held on you for you to hold on something. Again, I told you, you are not just born again. You are not just saved by God or by Jesus Christ just to decorate the church or life. No. You were born for a reason. Do you know why of all the accidents that you ever drove past, none of them was yours? Have you realized, have you thought about the fact that you've been to so many funerals and none of them were yours? Listen, you were born for a reason and for a purpose. You are not here because you bypass contraception. 
You are not here because your father met your mother. You are here by the predetermined counsel of the Lord. To come here on earth and die and live and not make a mark is a travesty. You've got to leave your footprints in the sands of time. But Paul says that I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. Then he says, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. Wow, Paul, which, which means there must, be, there must be something ahead of that great man. He says, I haven't achieved it. But I focus on this one thing. I focus on this one thing. I focus on this one thing. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. Whew! Think about it. The great man says that in the light of something ahead of me, that is the larger picture, the upward call, what he had called me to do, everything that I have achieved, I count them as nothing. So Paul, in effect, is telling us that in this life, if you are going to succeed, you must focus on something. You must focus on something. One thing, Paul says, not two, not three, not four, but one thing that I'm focusing on. I got a call from the Lord, and I'm following it. Last week, I told you that if you chase two rabbits at the same time, you catch none of them. If you chase two rabbits at the same time, you aren't going to catch any of them. I put it right there for you. You can screenshot it. You can have it. You can tweet it. It's not possible. You've got to, you've got, you've got to have intensity of focus. Listen, if you are a champion and you are hunting in lion territory, you don't get distracted by rabbits. If you are hunting in lion territory, you don't get distracted by rabbits. There are many of you, you are distracted too easily. Somebody posts something, somebody tweets something, the whole day, your day is gone. No, you must have intensity of purpose. You must focus on your assignment. Listen to me. If the devil cannot pollute your dream, he will dilute it. If the devil cannot pollute your dream, he will dilute it. How does he dilute it? Distractions. He wants to make you useless. He doesn't want you to become anything. So in the last episode, we talked about routine. I think I've, I've, I've done that a little bit. It's a key ingredient in, 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 in your way to focus. Now, today we are continuing our theme. One thing. And two of the greatest characters in God's way, in the Bible, one is an Old Testament champion. The other is a New Testament champion. They said some things that really boggled me. David, the anointed one, the Swiss Samuels of Israel. He was a national hero. He was a warrior. He was a king. He was amazing. He wrote Psalms. He was lifted from the backside of nothing to sit at the heights of leadership in Israel. Then also Paul the Apostle, we are talking about him, a trained mind, a scholar, a preacher, a teacher, amazing guy. These two individuals, after all their accomplishments, in their later, later years concluded on one thing, one thing, one thing. This is how David said it in Psalm 27 and verse number four. He said, one thing I have desired of the Lord. Oh, David, after all, yes. He says, one thing I have desired of the Lord. That will I seek. David said, listen, I'm a king. I'm a warrior. I have, I have a powerful resume. I brought down the giant. I silenced Goliath. I did amazing things. I, I destroyed the Philistines. I built a nation. I've done all of these things. I've acquired a whole lot of things. But I forget about everything. And I'm focusing on one thing that I desire. And that is I want to seek the Lord. And I want to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And behold the beauty of the Lord. And inquire in his temple. What a man. What a man. The man got his priorities right. That everything that I've accomplished is just a little side show. I have one thing. Then Paul also comes in and tells us in Philippians chapter 3, like we've just read, the third, the third theme verse. He said, I forget the things, uh, one thing that I do, I forget the things that are behind and I reach forward to the things that are ahead. I focus on things. I think about one day, the carpenter from Galilee is in a house, a place that he always goes to relax. You know, leaders always have places of, of, of relaxation. And the master used to go to a particular house in Bethany. He had some friends, Mary, Martha, and their brother Lazarus. And one day the master had gone there. He was hanging out. And the two sisters, Mary and Martha, they were busy cooking. Uh, they, they, but 
You know, one, one of them separated herself, Mary, and sat at Jesus' feet listening to her. Martha was busy cooking, entertaining, putting their garnishes and everything. And she comes and tells the Lord, can you tell my sister to help? And Luke records it succinctly in Luke chapter 10, verse number 41 and 42. Jesus answers and says to Martha, 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 you are worried. You are troubled about many things. Another translation says, you are distracted about many things. But one thing, you see that, one thing is needed. One thing, my friend, one thing, pastor, one thing, business person, one thing, athlete, one thing, lawyer, one thing, whoever you are, one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which will never be taken away from her. For David, for Paul, it was one thing. Sadly, for many of us, it is 40 things. Two million things. 16 things a day that we double in. Many people's lives, many people's lives have become so broad, so unfocused, so scattered, that they lose the ability to be effective and to make impact. As I said here, there's light here. But this light is diffused light. And so it cannot harm me, no matter how long I sit under this light. It's diffused. Now, if I take this same light and I pass them through a prism and focus that light, it can be so powerful and so strong that it becomes laser to cut through metal. So light that is focused, that becomes intense, intense becomes so powerful that it can cut through anything. That is the exact way that God wants you to do. If you don't focus and you are all over the place, you don't make impact. One of the cardinal secrets to success in life is this. The, greatest, the greater you can focus, the more success you can have. The greater you can focus, the more success you can have. That is why you've got to sit down and look at what are the things that are taking your focus away. I don't want to run ahead of myself. But listen, focus, my friend. Focus on your assignment. You cannot be everything. You cannot be everybody. Focus on what he has called you to do. We'll do that. I want to go back to the reading again in Joshua chapter 1. The same commandment he gave. I want to add verse 7 to the verse 8. He says, be strong, be very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Listen to what he said. Do not turn from it to the right hand and do not turn to the left. That is focus, that you may pr prosper wherever you go. Then he goes on to talk about the book of the law, that you shall meditate everything. So he says, don't turn, don't get distracted. There are things that will seek for your attention. Please focus. Have routine. Do it over and over and over and over. Sometimes people ask me about my secret. Of course, I tell them that if I tell you my secret, it doesn't become a secret any longer. But I, I, don't, I don't think I have some amazing secrets that you have to dig through pages and you have to know. These are the simple things that I am teaching you out of the overflow of my life. And one of them is that I focus on my assignment. I know what he's called me to do. I know where he has called me to. So I do not bother too much with what somebody else is doing. I do not want to be distracted. I do, want, I do, want, do not want to be pulled away because something looks popular or it looks nice. I knew what he told me and then I focus on that an, a, assignment. One of the greatest, I think it was Sunday night. I was lying on my bed in the hotel and just flicking through channels occasionally. And then I saw this documentary called The Last Dance. They were, they were talking about one of the greatest, probably the, possibly the greatest basketball star ever, Michael Jordan. A little bit, maybe, maybe on, on the same level as me. Maybe on the same level, on the same level as me. You know, Air Jordan. You know something I learned? After winning three NBA championships, earning multi-million dollar endorsements, be known everywhere. I mean, amazing. You know what he did? After winning the third one and all the monies, he spent the next summer going out four days a week, three hours a day, shooting 500 free, free throws. Yes. After all, yes. Remember Paul said, I haven't achieved anything. Because the day you stop growing, that is the day you start dying. The day you stop growing, that is the day you start dying. All you have is not all there is to have. Where you are is not all there is to be. There is something that God is calling until you draw your last breath.
push yourself, look forward, look straight, do something, get yourself better. Listen to this. It is not what you do to get the breakthrough that really matters. Again, it is not what you do to get the breakthrough that really matters. It is what you do after the breakthrough that sustains your victory. So you can fight, you can do something to gain the breakthrough. Many people do it, but they are not able to sustain it because that is where the work is. That is where the discipline is. That is where the duty is. That is where the daring is. So it's important, my friend, that you focus on one thing. What has he called? I know you are multi-talented. I know you are jack of all trades. I know you can do everything. Of course, Paul can, could do a lot. He had to achieve this, he's done that, he's done that, he's done that. And yet he says, no, I'm not zeroing on that. I am pressing for, I'm doing something different with my life. I hope you're learning something. Let me, let me just welcome a few folk here. Yeah, there are, there are guys all over. Let me say hello to everybody. Hey, Denzel, I hope you're, uh, we're talking about you. God bless you. Prophet Brian Jones Amwaten, my master. Hello, my master Chingy. How are you doing? Josie, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Actually, let me, let me go on. Listen. One of the biggest discoveries in life is to discover your one thing. Once I mentioned um, Prophet Brian's name, listen. Everybody who is anybody in this United States of America, whether you are dead or alive or semi-dead, this weekend, this weekend, Friday and Saturday, June 2nd and 3rd, in the great city of Columbus, Ohio, ISUSA 2023, International Youth Empowerment Seminar is happening in Columbus. If you've ever attended any in Ghana, you know it is the movement in Africa. This thing has caught fire. People are being transformed. It's not just a preaching contest. It is an empowerment place. Go there and to be empowered. It's better if you are there in person. Listen, take some time, of, invest something. Go there, come. I'm going to be there. So if you are not there, you are going to be square. You be there or be square. It's going to be awesome. Amazing lineup. Things will be taught to you. Not just, like I told you, not just preaching. There's something that I'm bringing to you about influence because the theme is going to be purpose and how you can use your purpose to influence this world. I can't wait. I can't wait to be there. So please join Pastor Brian. It's going to be amazing. So please make it. Or other than that, just get online or you'll not be my friend. But listen, the biggest discovery you can ever make in your life is to discover your one thing. You have to find out in life what is important and what is not worth your time. Find it. In fact, next episode, next episode, I'm going to teach you these things. I'm taking you on a journey. So you're not going to just get this and run. It will be just a half big thing. It's very dangerous. You have to find out what God has called you to do and what he has not called you to do. One time, I was coaching a, a particular pastor who was going through some particular struggles. We did everything we know to do. And in the end, God gave me wisdom. So our next session, I sat him up and I asked him a question. I asked him a question. Has God called you to do this? And it felt like I had hit him with a sledgehammer. Has God called you? Did you hear? Did you know? Do you know? Is that the witness? And he could not answer that question. And I said, your freedom will lie in your ability to answer that question truthfully. Are you called to this? It's an elephant called to dance. It's a fish called to ride a bicycle. What comes to you? What, have, what has God fashioned your life for? And what has he not fashioned you for? You need to find your one thing. Please listen to me. Your destiny is not something you create. It is a path that you discover. And then you develop. And then you deploy. You need to discover something. You need to develop it. And you need to deploy it. You need to go on a journey of inquiry. Ask your maker. Because purpose is always found in the mind of the manufacturer. When, when Steve Jobs, with his friend, somebody, one of them, they sat down, was Wozniak, they sat down to design this. They didn't design this to use as a shower head. They did not design this to ride on the wheels of a car. No. They wanted to put music on a leather tablet where you can carry with you. 
and then it developed into other things. So you don't use this. You don't go into the kitchen and find this thing sitting on the, on the gas range being heated. No. The purpose was in the mind of the manufacturer. And any time you buy this, any, any gadget for that matter, and you open it, of course, now we are all digital, the first thing that you normally see is a piece of paper. And they will tell you, don't assemble this or don't use this until you have read this. Why? Because it comes with instructions. And when you came into this world, God brought you here with instructions. Have you read the instructions about you? Why were you created a female? Why were you created a male? Why are you black? Why are you white? Why are you polka dot or striped? Why are you the way you are? What has God wired you for? When you discover that, you begin to eliminate all kinds of distractions in your life. A lot of people have been loaded, but they are not able to find expression because you have not found your one thing. People are telling you you are this. Next time you are that. Next time you are this. Next time you are that. And so you know something? You are going to grow one day. Nature is going to take care of you and you are going to sit in regret. I don't want you to be in regret. I want you to live your life on course. Please, don't let stuff distract you. Distraction. 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 The poison of champions. Distraction. For somebody listening to me today, maybe you've been through some pain and that pain is distracting you from your assignment. Listen, learn to turn your pain into purpose. Learn to turn your pressure into purpose. Pain comes with everything. You will never grow beyond the threshold of pain you are able to go through. Read biographies. Read about people. Observe champions. Every one of them bears in their body or in their mind some, some um, amount of pain. Stop worshipping at the altar of your last pain and refuse to move on. Listen, pain can, be, can, pain can be your uptaker or it can be your undertaker. Which one are you going to take? Not every pain is wrong. Many times pain comes to you as a megaphone to warn you that there's something wrong. And so listen, don't let your pain become an, an, an avenue for you to just go online, go on Facebook, go on social media and throw missiles all over the place. Nobody is interested and nobody cares. And you become a laughing stock. Let your pain drive you to something good. Don't, don't, don't let the last reversal, you planned and it didn't work and went the opposite direction. Don't let it, don't let it trouble you. The man who invented the, 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 the post-it at the 3M factory, he didn't go about inventing the post-it. He made a mistake and yet it turned out into something good. Listen, when the hand of the Lord is upon you and you have a lot of wisdom, even your mistakes will be copied by people. Never forget that. Maybe you went through some disappointment. In every disappointment, there's an appointment. Stop letting what went, the thing that went wrong to trouble. Listen, everybody gets it wrong many times. In fact, we get, it, we get it more wrong than we get it right eventually. Never forget that. You know, I, I, I told you about listening to the documentary of Michael Jordan, The Last Dance. And apparently, he, he missed more free throws than he got them. Practice, 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 practice. Listen, don't let the people who could have helped you, but they didn't help you, distract you. There are people, they spend all their lives angry with who, who should have helped them and they didn't help. And yet, you, in your Bible, the Bible says that God is our refuge and our strength a very present help. Sometimes it is in spite of people's help that you see the goodness of God. Don't get bitter, get better. Let something fire you. Forget about those who didn't celebrate you. There are people, you are, you, are, you are never happy because people didn't clap for you. Let me tell you, you are suffering from affirmation addiction. If, the pers if people who affirm you are not there, what are you going to do? You must have some old-fashioned bloody-mindedness. Forgive the crudeness of my terminology. And you tell me what, that whether people clap for me or they don't clap for me, there's an assignment ahead of me. That is maturity, my friend. That is the stuff that champions are made of. In spite of all the things that he went through, Paul the Apostle declared, he, he went through shipwrecks, he, he, I mean, well, he was not, maybe some of them, he was beaten, he was betrayed, he was hungry, everything happened, and he stood before the, the judgment seat of King Agrippa in Acts chapter 26, and verse number 19, he said, therefore, in the light of everything, therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. What a man. After the beatings, after the betrayals, after the storms, after the snake bites, after everything, he says, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. The vision that was shown me on the way to Damascus many years ago, that I would preach the gospel before the great and the potentates, I stuck with it. 
Yes, there were distractions. Yeah, yes, there were things that w w wanted to pull me away. But I was not disobedient. One time, he went to preach in a place called Lystra. And the Bible says that they, they got him, they took him outside the, the, the city gates, and they stored him and they left him for dead. The disciples surrounded him and they prayed. And this great gallant warrior got up. If it was some of us, it was finished. I can imagine in the theater of my mind, bones broken, bleeding everywhere, hurts, pain. And he gets up and he goes to that same place and he makes an announcement. Yo, listen up. Concerning the message, I didn't finish before you killed me. This is part two. I am coming back again. How much does it take to stop you? Forgetting the things that are behind. Today's generation, we give up too easily. If God gave that thing to you, it will be contested. But Paul says that, maintain your focus. So I want to give you three things, three, three things to help you discover your one thing. Then next week, I'm going to get into the practicalities of that discovery. There are some 10 things that I'm going to give to you next week. You're going to check. It's a checklist. So make sure that you bring your part and everything. And you're going to go through and then you're going to find out. We're going to eliminate some things. It's going to be very, very amazing. Yes, my question says we need to spread this good news. I agree. We need to spread it. Mommy, Yamiche, God bless you. Pastor David, discover one thing. All the way from Toronto, Canada, Nana Kunado Brefo says that your destiny is not something you create. It's a path you discover and develop. Clifford says here, yeah, Clifford says the same thing. God bless you. Uncle B from the city of London, thank you for sitting up. Yes, Vivian Machi, God bless you so, so, so much. This is, this is amazing. All the way from Dan Doncaster, United Kingdom, the most reverend Kingsley, God bless you. Turn your pain into purpose, I'm telling you. Michelle Ray, wow, I miss you. I'll see you next week. Cleo, God bless you. Learn to tell, listen, too many people, you, you, put, you put your pain on a pedestal in a mausoleum. Where people will come and pay and just look at uh, where you bury your dreams away. Some of you, you put your pain in, in a museum. Where people, no, don't do that. Let your pain be a manuscript for yourself. Read it and become something better. Every great man, every great woman has pain in their background. There are some things, my friend, you will not be able to escape. One of them is pain. You will not be able to medicate your pain away. Every champion has cast. Paul says, henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks, the brand marks of Jesus Christ. He went through some things. Let me give you three things to help you. Discover your one thing. Next week, we'll get deeper. Number one, discover what you have to say no to. Discover what you have to say no to. Now, listen. Normally, I wouldn't even comment. I'm a person, I am, I am the vice chairman of Comment Readers Association on social media. I hardly comment on anything. I like to look at people's comments. That's my entertainment. I like how people, there are people, they will comment on any, everything. Even if they are dead, they will rise up, come and comment and go and die again. But I think, I, somebody posted something about mine, about me telling people no. And no is a complete sentence. And the person got it all wrong. Why do I have to say no? Blah, blah, blah. And I laughed as a little mind. Young man, young woman, listen. Listen carefully. And when you lack a brain, borrow one. Never forget that. Borrow one. Discover what you have to say no to. One of the true unrecognized keys to success may not be found in what you say yes to, but in your ability to say strategic no's. You can't say yes to everybody. You can't say yes to everything. You can't even say yes to your feelings all the time. It is very easy to follow the crowd in order to fit in. Yes, yes. Do you know how many people are in jail today because they couldn't say no? Do you know how many people are pregnant out of wedlock because they couldn't say no? Do you know how many people had to leave school because they couldn't say no? Do you know how many people have gone into bankruptcy because they couldn't say no to their credit card? No is a very powerful word. Listen, until you have a vision, until you have a purpose, until you have a revelation for your life, you never know who to say no to and what to say no to. If you don't have a revelation, there are so, everything will attract your attention. Let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. If you lack purpose, everything becomes attractive. If you lack purpose, everything is attractive. That is why there are, they follow everybody. Oh, there's new preacher here. There's this one. Do you know your purpose? 
When you sit in your car, when you buy the ticket, when you, why are you going where you are going? Do you have a, is there a purpose in it? Listen to my friend, listen to me, my friend. You cannot go about commenting on every post all the time. You must have focus. You cannot go about making noise when you should be quiet. Tell yourself, keep quiet. The fact that you can type, the fact that you can post, doesn't mean you should post all the time. The wise man said in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, I think verse number 7, that there is a time to talk and there is a time to keep quiet. There are people, I, wa I wonder if they read that. Yes, there is a time to speak and a time to keep silence. There is a time to keep, you keep silent. Listen, remember the master told us that be wise as serpents and harmless as doves? Wise as serpents. He used these creatures as an example. Many times if you live like some of the places some of us live, they tell us that we have all these snakes everywhere. But the only time the snake gets into danger is when it is discovered. So sometimes you just need to hide and be quiet. Discover your purpose. Develop your purpose and deploy your purpose. Don't put everything out there. I'm going to spit. You put it on social media. I'm going to do this on social media. Come on! Have boundaries in your life. Know who to say yes to and who to say no to. You know one reason why a lot of people are easily, easily manipulated is because you lack focus. Listen to me, my friend. You are nobody's puppet. Know who you are. You are not created to dance like a, a puppet, like a marionette on, everybody, on everybody's strengths. No. Know what you are wired for and live for that one thing. It is that one thing that is going to give you a breakthrough. I used to lecture a lot in Bible schools and things and I always tell the students before we graduated them that be known for something. Not for everything. When your name is mentioned, you must be known for at least one thing. What are you known for? So please, your first step, discover the things that you can say no to. Very important. I, I'm not here to tell you what it is. You know it and you've got to do it yourself. Number two, you have to discover or you have to find the place of your passion. Find a place of your passion. Because without passion for one thing, that thing, you will never be effective. Passion is a force that is more powerful than death. And I'll prove it to you very soon. When I talk about passion, I talk about passion. Let me, let me, let me. Passion is an intense emotion. I'll put it out there on your screen for you. Passion is an intense emotion that compels you to action. That is passion. When you are passionate about something, it's an emotion. So on the inside, of it burns like wildfire. It brings fire to your eyes. It brings a steam in, in your belly. You can't sit still. It moves you. It wakes you up. I tell people all the time, and people who are very close, who, the one who sleeps in the same bed with me, I hardly ever set an alarm clock to wake up. Because when I have passion for something, there's something that I have built on my inside, a, an inner discipline. No matter how late I go to bed, how tired I am, if there's an assignment, that alarm clock will wake me up. Sometimes, many, many, many minutes before the alarm clock. Sometimes I tell mommy, I'm going to sleep for just 15 minutes. And she knows it. And I lie down and I'm gone. And in 14 minutes, I'm up. She looks at me and shakes her head. It's not magic. It's discipline. Because I have a passion for what I'm doing. Listen. Passion is a byproduct of purpose. When you discover your one thing, you will you, you develop passion for that one thing. Many years, when people were trying to discover things about volume and weight and that kind of thing, how ships can float, how the, and, and all these alchemists were taking, they were, they were taking advantage of people. There was this Greek mathematician, an inventor. He kept thinking about how to work this Seemingly impossible situation. I'm sure if you went to any good school, you heard about Archimedes. And one day Archimedes went into the, into the bath. He was going to take a bath. Naked, when he stepped into the bath, and the water level came up, it dawned on him that volume that goes into a liquid is the same volume that is displaced. And he got the equation right. Listen, you know what he did? He rushed out of the bathroom and started running down the street Stark naked shouting, Eureka, Eureka, Eureka. It means I have found it. I have found it. 
I have found it. Listen, the man found purpose and he, he, he ran through the streets naked because he had found something. Listen, a man, a woman of purpose sometimes, you act crazy. You know something. That is why when a woman is pregnant and the waters are about to break or something, they are not interested in makeup. There's a passion. Something has broken. They are ready to bring something. Listen, people that have passion are hardly distracted. Please listen to me again. You cannot be good at everything. You are not called to everybody. You are not called everywhere. I get hundreds of invitations, programs, churches, things every year. I'm talking about literally hundreds. My PA will tell you. Hundreds of them. And know something? The majority of them, I respectfully decline. Because I'm not desperate to find my face on another flyer or a poster or anything. No. I don't live for affirmation. I've got nothing to prove again. But I tell people sometimes, what kind of meeting are you looking at? What is this? And I said, this is my calling. Let me recommend somebody else for you. That is what I do. Listen, no matter who you think you are, let me say something, get it in your spirit once and for all. Are you ready for it? Are you ready to listen to, to, listen to this? You are an answer to somebody's questions. You are a solution to somebody's problem. As I talk to you now, it could be possible that somebody is calling your name. It may not be your literal name, but they are calling out to go for some help. And that answer is on the inside of you. Please, don't die useless. There's something on the inside of you that somebody else is looking for. Passion. Have some passion. This Paul that we are talking about in Acts chapter 2, Verse 22 to 24. He said, see, I go bound in my spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulations are with... Now, hold on. Paul is saying that there's a divine compulsion. There's a passion that is moving me to Jerusalem. And he says that the Holy Spirit keeps testifying that, Paul, you are going to face issues, pressure, pain, Possibly death in Jerusalem. But listen to what he said. He said, none of these things move me. My God, passion. None of these things move me. And I don't, I don't count my life as dear to myself. Why? Because I want to finish my race with joy. I want to finish that ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus. I want to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. What a man. What a man. Passion. Stronger than death. He said, none of these things move me. In fact, the next chapter, Acts chapter 21, verse 13, they wanted to stop him from going. And Paul said, what do you mean by weeping and breaking my heart? I am ready not only to be bound, to be put in jail, but I'm also ready to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord. Passion. Passion. What are you willing to die for? What are you willing to... That, that, your passion must drive you on. I heard a story of a man who had a store. He had a store in a, in a big mall. And one time the mall started going down and things. So some multinationals, they bought the mall and they determined to remodel. So they bought out all the stores, bought out all the stores. And when they got to the little man's store, the man said, no deal, I'm not taking it. No matter how much they persuaded the guy, he said, no, this is store belongs to me. It's my inheritance. It's my passion. I live for this. It's not for sale. There's no deal. And the multinationals threatened him. We are going to build all around you. We'll put you out of business. We'll do he said, no way. This is my passion. I'm sticking with it. So true to form, they tore down things. They, they remodeled. They did everything. And on the day that they were reopening the mall, they put a huge sign in front of the mall. Grand opening. And the man in the little store with the passion also got his little sign and put it on his store. Main entrance. Main entrance. Grand opening, he said, this is the main entrance. My friend, that is passion. If you discover your one thing, you will know what you are willing to die for. Never forget that. Never forget that. I hope you are learning something today. So please remember, discover what you have to say no to. There is a place, somebody listening to me, there are some places you have to say no to those places. I tell you, you will not be able to fly with eagles if you continually fellowship with turkeys. If all your friends, if all your friends are on your same level, or if you are the smartest person in your group, you don't belong there. 
You must go to places where you are challenged. People must pull something out of you. Listen, I'm talking about the issues of life. I'm talking about your tomorrow. I was talking to somebody the other day and I said, when I'm dealing with you today and I say some things that you don't understand today, I'm helping you next five years. You will understand it when you get there. So listen, I sit in this chair Tuesday by Tuesday. Sometimes I'm tired, but I really want to help you. I'm not looking for brownie points. I'm not looking for affirmation. I want to meet you one day and when I ask you, how are you? I don't want any long story. I just want you to tell me, Ambassador of Hope, thank you for driving me forward. So discover what you have to say no. Then you have to find a place of your passion. Let me give you the last one. Who is here? Anybody here? Ngozi, God bless. Avis, God bless you. Susanna, Ellen, B. God richly bless you. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. So many of you, so many of you. Let me, let me finish this. And the last key I want to give to you today is, remember I told you to find your place of passion? Now find your place of fulfillment. Find your place of fulfillment. If you are not feeling fulfilled in a particular place, you never will until you discover your one thing. Never forget that. One thing. Once you get your one thing, listen to me. When you find your one thing, it could be in the most inauspicious place, the hardest place, the most terrible place, but if you have found that one thing, you'll be fulfilled there. Never forget that. Why would people leave civilization? Why would people leave so-called, so-called civilization and go and live in foreign countries under austere conditions and feel happy? One time, David Livingston, he left Scotland and went all the way into the heart of Africa. And for years he was gone. For years he was gone. Nobody heard of him. And so one of the New York newspapers hired a man to go look for him, Henry Morton Stanley. He traveled from nation to nation to nation. Old Africa, ancient, through lands, tribes, war, everything. Until eventually, he was led to a place where there was this old man. He had been savaged by lions before. He was emaciated. Malaria had done a lot of things on him. And when Henry Morton Stanley met David Livingston, the great age-old question, Livingston, I presume. And Livingston said, what do you expect? Henry Stanley asked him, why have you left the beauties and the majesties of the Scottish Highlands to be in the savage jungles of Africa? And Livingston said, come with me. I can take you to one of the highest mountains around and show you the smokes from a thousand villages of people who have not come into the saving knowledge of Jesus. In the midst of the penury, in the midst of the austere conditions, in the midst of being savaged by lions, in the midst of all kinds of dangers, Livingston found fulfillment to the extent that he wrote that when I die, well, even if I'm in Scotland and I die, take out my heart and go bury it in Africa. Do you have that fulfillment? Listen, fulfillment doesn't mean that everything is okay and you have no pressure. You can be in a place of joy and still not be fulfilled. That is why some of the most, some of the most dissatisfied people, they have a lot of stuff. Listen, when you, have, when you find your one thing, that is when the music starts for you. When you, start, when you find your one thing, that is when your dance begins. When you find your one thing, that is when your job becomes your hobby. It may be hard, but it will be bearable. I hope you've learned something. Write these three things down and I'm gone. Number one, start living. For those of you who have put your life on pause, start living. By that I mean get up and get moving. Find something and do. Do something. Listen, many times life begins broad. But the further you walk, the narrower it gets. I'm helping you to find your one thing. Maybe it's broad. You are all over the... Start moving. Start moving. Start moving. Start moving. Start moving. And you find out that the older you get, the less things come to you. And so start moving. Do something. Number three, priori uh, number two, prioritize what is important. Prioritize important things in your life. Let me tell somebody this. You are no longer a teenager. Drop the trivialities. Stop going to useless places that feed nothing but the, the, the wrong things in your life. Life will not wait for you until you wake up. Do something with your life. And finally, present your life back to your maker. Present your life to God. 
Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Remember, I said this is not a preaching thing, but occasionally I use this to help. Can, if I can have it in the New Living Translation, I'll be very happy. Other than that, I'll go on. But it says that, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. He said, do not be conformed. He said, well, dear brothers, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he's done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind, of, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. And he says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. He says that present your body. Now, let me talk to you about the word present. That word present is a Greek word picture. Present. This is the photo. He says that is your true worship. That is your reasonable way. What he's saying is that when a worshiper, you know, in those days when they went to worship the Lord, they would take either a sheep, they would take a bull, they would take something to sacrifice. And he says that so long as that bull is in your hands, it's yours. But when you go into the temple, you present it to the priest. And the moment it leaves your hand and gets into the hands of the priest, that becomes your worship. So long as it is yours, it is no worship. But when you present it to the priest, when you present it to God, then that becomes your reasonable worship. I'm saying all this to say this, that so long as your life is in your hands alone, it's not your worship. Present it to God. When you present it to him, Paul is saying that is your worship. That is true worship. Listen, I have a question. That whose hands have you put your life in? Whose hands have you put your life in? If I went down the street to the sports shop or Walmart and I buy myself a basketball, a basketball in my hands will cost me about $30 or so or $50. If I take that same basketball and I put it in the hands of LeBron James, LeBron James will turn it into a multi-million industry. If you put a golf club in my hands, I'll just use it as a piece of steak. I don't play golf. Take that same golf club and put it in the hands of Tiger Woods. It will turn out to be millions. If you gave me a tennis racket, maybe I'll play a little pickup game. But that same racket in the hands of Serena, Will Serena, Serena Williams will become something amazing. You gave me a slingshot, maybe I'll use it to hunt birds. But the same slingshot in the hands of David the champion will solve a national challenge called Goliath, silencing forever. You gave me a piece of steak. It's just a piece of steak. Maybe to hike on mountains and things. But put that same steak, that rod in the hands of a Moses. And to become the catalyst to deliver three million slaves from the hands of captivity. You give me two fish and five loaves. It's nothing but a happy meal. You put the same thing in the hands of Jesus Christ. And you to feed 5,000 plus starving souls. You give me a piece of cloth. This like this. It's no, nothing but a fashion statement. You take that same thing and you put it on the shoulders of Jesus. A woman who has hemorrhaged blood for 12 years will touch it and have healing. Give me a box of nails and the best I can do is to build a box. Three of those nails in the hands of the capital from Galilee will become that which saves a dying and a bleeding world. Put your hand in the hands of the master. He will change you. He will empower you. If you are broken, he will fix you. He will let you discover your one thing. And you will start living. Never forget that. My name is Franco Fusuapia, the ambassador of hope. Before you go, listen, July 19th to the 23rd, ISI in Atlanta, Georgia. Please, 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 what do I do? Make time for that. Register, get in. It's going to be amazing. I'll talk to you more about that next week. But this weekend, Friday and Saturday, let all flights, let all roads, let all drives. The Jesus Power Assembly of God Church, where Pastor Brian will be hosting IS 2023, IS USA. The one in Ghana was out of the ballpark. It gets better and better and better. The youth are hungry. You have done, you have done the rehearsal a lot. Now we are calling you to the recital. Get yourself empowered. Get yourself prepared. It's going to be epic. Be there or be square. I'll see you when I see you. Have a good evening. The Lord bless you. Bye-bye.